UK Arts Workshop in Mexico. We're going to spend the whole day here playing how they make batik. And then how they go from like plain clothes to how to blown batik at the end of the day. If possible, see how much we can learn the history and um, what could people involved in this thing at the end of the day too. So let's go. Yeah. Certainly very well. Something like that. Mm. Started from the paperwork. And I see paperwork for like uh, weeks. And the reason why we are doing our paperwork is just to know how to create design. From a gray design, one color to two color. From two color to component of free hand. Paperwork is from reports down there. While you are doing your paperwork, you'll be helping people with the visual learning and helping them practically learning true things you see by the works, helping them to the works, helping them fold fabrics. Just the basics, teaching you what uh, to expect before you start working on the fabrics. Basically, what we do is get um, um, get sketches from seniors or instructors, and then they will give us the copy it, and then you create your own design. This is mine. After this, you move to another one, another aspect. This is two color drawing. This is free and design. This is my personal. This is figure cutting. And this is my own personal figure cutting. And this is the pattern, pattern drawing. When it comes to paperwork, it has to do with pencil or paperwork. But when it comes to fabric, it has to do with candy. All the design that we've been giving to them on paperwork, they will not transfer it to fabric. We want them to know how to create those designs and how to enlarge it. I mean, do you still remember the kind of like paperwork designs? Yeah, I remember them. It's embedded in my mind because it took me a long time to actually get them done. Look, how long have you been doing this? Two years ago. Two years ago. Wow. I mean, Actually, like the color and the design is actually like it's catchy. So, what's your favorite writing about the batik? Huh? Boxing. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> First thing that we need to do is uh, by melting our wax inside the pot. Normally, we have our own normal temperature that we used to use on fabric. Because if you don't use normal temperature, your design will not come out well. So candle wax is what we use to do our design. So I came for sewers. You came for sewers. Okay. So sewers is after like service. Okay. So learning of the hard work. Right. Understand. So learning of the hard work. After you finish your school, so you work that you Interesting. Yes. What do you say this to do? The candle is like your lead when you have a pencil. Right. So wherever your phone goes is wherever your lead goes. Wherever your pencil goes is wherever your lead goes. So whatever design you create with that at that time, you cannot erase it. I think a better explanation is, is using a pen because you cannot erase a pen, but you can erase a pencil. That's why paperwork is very, very essential because you learn how to work without using a eraser. So whatever mistake you make, you can make a design around it because every mistake is a work of Because any design that you apply on your fabric is just to protect the color of the fabric. So by the time you go to that place to dip it into color, you know, every place that you apply uh, candle wax will bring out the design. Any other places that the candle wax is not touched will bring out the color. So these two things work together. So what's your favorite thing about Doing batik work. My favorite part is when we are we are dipping. Okay. We are dipping it with like mixing of colors. Right. Okay. You know, in the olden days, there is nothing like dipping. They only do one color, which is African blue. 
which is indigo color. You know, okay, my fabric is a white color, my fabric is a red color, my fabric is a blue color. The only thing they have to do is design it and dip it to indigo color. Adire. I feel like I need to know this Adire. Everybody has been mentioning Adire design itself. Uh, Actually, batik is also an Indonesian technique and it was noticed that candle has a way of holding color in it, especially when it's on cotton fabrics. In the olden days, they do Adire. Adire is made with uh, Adi, like in tight, then we wear, then we call it tie and dye. That's mm. that what most people call it Adire. Uh, mm. that, so, no matter, batik is different, Adire is different, but no matter, we call it Adire. When they first started this work, so that's the particular design they used to do then. Yeah. But this one's now, it's just your own, it's our own creativity that brings up all these ones. Okay. According to the story I heard, I don't know if it's lies, if it's a myth, if it's true. It was said that Nike herself was working on adireleko. Adireleko is the olden way of doing adire, which is using a corn flour and using the feather of birds to draw whatever you design. So she was using a lantern at the time, and I think she, I think they said she was in a candle. Then some something happened, and it slipped into the fabric. They, they waxed the fabric and realized that where the candle was was more detailed than where the adrenaline was. So they started putting in more candle. And with time, candle became the normal way for batik. Something like uh, a way to wall in you. Eh? Our old generation, you know, not it by you to do it. I want to make a tone in shape and do a way which is uh, African blue. The <laughs> But uh, look at that, it is more like that. It can take like a week or more than that. The ambience here has been telling like the best part of working here. Because everybody is just all love, laugh, and giggles. I don't mind coming here just on a regular day to even just come and like catch crews and banters. Anyways, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of interviews. And I just actually for around like what they do and how they do it. But for now, we we'll go to the big ones. That's where like the small guns are. And that is where the big guns are. Yeah. Twenty-two years. So this is basically what twenty-two years of experience gets you, cause come on, these lines cannot just pipe. <laughs> but you just see the difference in terms of like details and quality and even like precision. What exactly is stamping? There, are, there are different types of stamps actually. There's a foam stamp. There is a wooden stamp. Foam stamp is the ones whereby they draw a pattern of design on the foam. So all you need to do is dip the foam into a hotter wax. So from the hotter wax, you put it on the fabric. Stamps are recommended because they are faster than when you use your hands, basically. It's a faster way of waxing. The dyeing process is basically use, you using caustic soda, hydrosulfate and your preferred dye to give you a perfect color solution. And currently like the kind of plates they are doing right now is ready for what? We want to dye them. We want to put them into dye. Okay. And dye them. When we dye it, now take it out, spread it, let the fabric oxidize by 10 20 minutes. After right. the oxidizing you have to raise it again to wash away the Diamond chemical. 
to avoid damages because it's chemical. You have to rinse it. The dyeing process is for those that love multicolored uh, fabrics because people, especially women, we love to show colors, we love to show what we are and what we are made of. So we like to use colors. And to activate the soda and the hydrosulfate, you need hot water. It's just like a hot, a, a hot solution in a science class or chemistry class. You have to mix chemicals together. And you're advised to actually use a glove while using the soda because if you're not careful, it can actually affect your fingers or wherever it lands on that is not protected. So that's why we actually, that's why we actually use gloves and we are very, very careful not to be so close to whatever solution we are making. The waxing is the final stage. The wax made to remove the wax can be out of the fabrics so mm -hmm. that you can see the design that you have or you, uh, drawn the fabrics. What part of the process is your favorite? Every process is sweet, but I think I, I like the waxing. What I like most doing is the waxing. The waxing. Stage of the wax. Okay. The waxing. Nobody can say I should always the waxing. Watching students do it, I love the waxing so much. So after when you have removed the candle wax, your cloth is. During the waxing, we have two processes. The first process is the hot water, the second process is the cold water. Something that you use can do what to design. You know, the only method to remove that can do is by burning your water. Hot water is the last stage to remove the can do wax. The second process is when you, exactly from, immediately from the heat, you drop it into the cold water. Have you, have you ever tried putting hot wax into cold water before? It's going to move high, like up, okay, to float. above, it's exactly to float. So we want it to float above the fabrics. We sun dry them. Once sun dry them, we take them to the dry cleaner. Once dry cleaner is done with them, then they're ready for sale. <laughs> it's technically like close to the end and I just want to like wrap it up and actually ask people what they've done so far, see where everybody's at and um, but ideally you guys already get a brief of like how they make batik from paper working to the waxing and then to, I mean it goes to ironing and even probably selling it but that's that, everybody on the level. Okay. Mm. I have known about it before, and I know it. So when I finished school, I decided to learn. Do you encourage people to actually like learn more about this? Yes, I will because it helped me to be independent in ways that I didn't imagine. I didn't know I could reach this level of independence basically because I was thinking, okay, what can I make from this? What can I do from this? But it's not about just making the money from me, but the exposure you get and the kind of family you get to have from it. And it gives you this sense that life is not just one or two ways, there are many ways more to it. There are many more colors to life. Yeah, the challenge that we have here is uh, the uh, weight of dollar. You know, most of the things that we are using, the import is so good. Whatever that you go to market today, if you go to market tomorrow, why are they going to buy? Want to increase. These days, China has taken over everywhere. Do you know that China people used to come to this place to snap, to copy our design? 
they will take it to their own country. Now print it and sell it back to Nigeria. So now people are seeing our own production as something that is too cost for them to, to wear. If me, I'm selling my products, 20,000 Nigerian money. They prefer going for China products, 4,500 naira. So if they don't really know the original one, it's the fake one, they will say, it's Adiri, and it's very, that one is very cheap. Imagine I'm doing five years from money to the infinite time. I cannot sell it ten years. So, and all those standard people, they can produce 5,000 years, 20,000 years in a day. So that is the only challenge that we are facing now. 70% of people prefer to go for China. But the only people that know the quality are few. But me, my advice is that people should go for quality products, which is our products. Everything that China is producing today is our design. We allow them because we thought they want to personalize us. They want to promote us. That's what I can say. Wow. We Africans even rate our Adire the way others rate our Adire. Because we Africans rather buy the cheaper ones, the printed ones, than to buy the ones that we, the artists, actually worked hard on to give you guys and show you that, okay, this is what we are giving you. But abroad, they can't even take the artists there just to learn from them and steal their idea and send us back there. It has been done in different ways, as been done in different manners, just like Italian leather, which is which is African made, which is Nigerian made basically, but they never told us it was Nigerian made, they said it was Italian leather. But we valued it because it was Italian. That actually speaks a lot to our batik life itself. Because people pass here and they don't actually value what we do. But we know like we are we know that we are the diamonds in the rough, so it's not our it's not our issue with that. We like it regardless of they rating us or not, we rate ourselves. People should keep patronizing us. Then people should keep appreciating African products. You know? This is the only area that me and you or any other African person can progress. Let's patronize African products. So this is the candle work that like we're from the clothes, all of this.